G'day, how you going? Ian Aplis here, your acrylic guru. Welcome. The size of my canvas I will have in the description below and also the colours that I choose to use, they'll be listed in the description below once the live feed has finished. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you just what you can paint, all right? Uh, so stick around to the end and soak up the knowledge you're about to witness, all right? So come on over here and I'll show you what I'm doing. I've got my canvas in an upright position. Now for this painting, if you really like it, I'm going to create a traceable for it because believe it or not, for those beginners, you need one, two, three, four, five, and then your sand water line here, okay? And then we're going to have something beautiful in the sky here. And it's going to be a beautiful wave just hitting in the water there. I'm getting some craft paint and some clear retarder mixed together so as I can prime up the area for my sky because I want a beautiful sky. I'm not sure exactly what colour I'm going to do the sky yet. I did grab a few colours out but I want something a bit purpley maybe. I don't know. So we'll get this mixed with a putter on a brush. If you want my putter on a brush and my blending brushes, message me on Facebook. Links in the description below and we'll get them sorted out. So I want to prime in the part I want for the sky, okay, with this retarder and craft paint, because it's going to allow the paints to work like, you know when you see the oil artist paint clouds and skies? But this method, don't tell anyone, it's better than oils because it dries quicker. Now I'm going to stroke that left and right like a pure gentleman, get it nice and thin, even coat there now what color do you want your sky i really don't know what color i want my sky but i'm going to go for something i did in the old days phalo blue see your brush just wipe it because it's going to mix up with the white again with the other colors on there and i want to pick up the phalo blue Uh, where do we want this? I'll start at the bottom, a bit off the bottom. Get it to the bottom now. I'm going to go across the bottom. Now I want to start bringing it up to the height of the sky. There we go. Just bring it right up. Get the edges done where my tape is. Stroke it left and right. Look at that, left and right, like a pure gentleman. This is acrylic paint. Now that very top bit, I want to make that dark with the beautiful, sexy dioxine purple. So I'm grabbing the dioxine purple, very thick. I'm not that keen on Matisse thick structured paint. See, it even says it on the tube, structured. I'm going to wipe that brush again. Don't need to wash it. Why not? Because it's going to mix in with the colours that are still on the canvas. So now I want to pick up the dioxine purple and we'll keep the top of that sky nice and dark. So there's two ways you can do it. You can brush it in or you control it. I'll, I'll try and control it first by stamping it on, getting it right where I want, probably about there, right up to the top. Now I'll... I've got it where I roughly want it, just about there, okay? Now I've got to wipe that brush again, getting all the bulk off it. Now I want to stroke that dioxine purple in the top of the sky there. So we've got a nice dark sky up there. Now, grab yourself a pouncer. If you do not have a pouncer, just make yourself one or go to the art shops. They look like this. They're so handy to have. I want to grab some titanium white. <clears throat> Don't need that much, a dag. So I'm going to grab some of that in the pouncer. Now I want this about here. So I want to put him on, give him a bit of a twist, pull it off. That will do all over Red Rover, very simple. 
Okay, that's the moon done. Now we are going to do some clouds before we lose our wet sky. I've got titanium white, the normal stuff I have in my tube. I like to use a medium-sized fan brush. My fan brushes that I use to put the clouds on, they are simply hog bristle because they're sturdy. Now, I want some simple clouds around this moon, so I'll start this side first. I want to come up here, billow it around, get some back here. I did something like this before, and when I did it, I thought, oh, I like that method. A lot of beginners can get something out of that. So that'll do because it's kind of wearing away. Grab yourself a blending brush and a kitchen towel. Do something like this. Now, I want to leave the side to the moon reasonable and blend out the other side into the sky. The side facing the moon, if you feel it's a bit too sharp, like say here, for instance, you can just tantalizingly tickle it a little bit. There we go. Because an edge of a cloud isn't always perfect. Have a look at your clouds. But so long as you get the values in the areas there. Now, what I want to do, I don't want that coming off like that. I want that spewing out this way as well and coming back. I'm using the corner of the brush, getting turmoil on there, pulling it up there. And we're pretty much going to make a porthole of clouds here. Real simple and easy to do and very satisfying to the eye as well. That's the main thing about a lot of art is getting it satisfying to the eye, pleasing to the eye. Now I'll quickly do something over here. Maybe, let's say the space is right in there. So I'm going to go about here now. I'm billowing around, billowing around. I've got to stop about there now because the brush is running out of paint. Well, it's not running out of paint, but it's mixing with too much of the blue. So same thing again. See these brushes when you buy these brushes? If they do that, just do that. They're very simple and easy to use and very effective. Now I'm doing the same again, tickling that edge, bringing it back with some lighter and duller values within the faded side. And you will see doing clouds like this in a night sky is very satisfying, easy to do, very achievable. Okay, do a little bit more. Look at that already, eh? If this is your first time here and you like what you see, hit the thumbs up. If you're watching the replay, give me a comment. Now, I want to get something around the bottom here. So I'm going to sink them back with something around the bottom. I'm using this paint that I got off a friend, but it's very old. So maybe I could have, would have, should have used proper paint. I'm going to bring some of this down into the sky here like this. Watch down there. So it's allowing me to make different parts of the cloud. They're not just one bit near the edge, if you know what I mean. Now, I want to leave that solid bit and bring it down, tickle the tops a bit, get some of this turmoil so there's bright and duller areas of it. And it's in front of the other ones there. So we've got like a big, thick porthole of clouds kind of coming in front of us there and it's very easy to do you can practice what sort of layout you would like to do with these so when you're doing a painting you know exactly what you're going to do have a look at the difference see this one's gone sort of claggy now we can probably put another body of cloud here start there very soft and then start coming in front there here. This is a lot better paint there coming down in front of that one. See what I did there? Now, see, that's the cloud. You don't want to leave it skinny. Always try and put some kind of grunt to it, some kind of body there, just like that. And we're going to simply blend that again as well. Okay. Back again, keeping the side to the moon hard. 
and turmoiling and twisting. I can feel my blue paint with that craft paint under it and retarder slowly starting to dry. So I've got to get my act together. I'm carrying on here, talking too much, getting carried away with the vibe of it all. I never like to finish a cloud like that. I always like to dong dong out but up there and see how I've just like that. I did the same over there before as well. Now we'll simply put some horizon clouds on there, all right, just to finish the sky off. And you will see with acrylic paints, you can make your skies look just as good as the oils, but don't tell the oil artist, this way is better. Now watch what we do to the bottom here. Just got to get a bit more paint. The colours on the canvas are changing the cloud colours too. So now I want to put me horizon clouds. So I'm going to come along and do something right in the horizon there. Get it up where you want. Come along. Come along. And then just finish off there. Wham. Bango. Now I'm going to simply just blend that away. Now with that one, I want to keep the top hard and the bottom come down to the atmosphere, tickle the tops a bit. Now watch how I blend this, dabbing, very little pressure, working out the pressure I need, looking where the painting's going with its movements and follow that. Don't ever put your brush onto the canvas and hope for the best. If you feel you're doing that a lot, that's your inner self saying, you know what, you've got to practice some more. Now, I don't like that. I want to just disturb that a little bit. There we go. And that can come all the way down to the horizon there. Now, what I will do is grab my toothbrush, if I can find the darn thing. Show you what how you make your stuff. I just want a little bit of stars in the sky before we get on to the rest of it. So the best way is to get a flat toothbrush, not a convex or concave one, and start pulling it into some soft-bodied white, just like that. So just the tips of your toothbrush is loaded. Just in the middle there. I could have done that before I'd done the clouds because you want stars deep in there. I've got another putter on a brush. <laughs> this time I've got a few ready. I need some more craft white. Now I'm not that fussed about having retarda in the bottom half because it'll stay wet enough just to scrumble. I'm not doing beautiful blending. So I'll get some of this. Anyway, let's get this all done. All the way to the top of the water there, just to there. That'll do, something like that. And just stroke it left and right. Good colour for water, simple but effective, is your turquoise. So we'll use some turquoise. I want to start at the top and bring it down. The colour on the board, this white on the canvas will lighten it up. We'll come across here. I want to try and get something out there there we go there we go now i'll bring this down i'll let it come lighter as we go just to there i'll get a bit more in there just like that stroke it now put this color on until you're happy with the vibe of it all i want to stroke that now those three lines that i had in the middle I'll get this all one colour first. I've got to get them there because it's important to know where to put the dark colours. Now, see this bottom half here that I didn't get the turquoise on? We need the brown in there. So I'm going to simply use some raw sienna. So I've got another putter on a brush. I'm grabbing some raw sienna just to... Get me sand colour. Now I want to get this on before I contaminate it with the green. Now I will mix it with the green. Can let it go under the water. This is how you would get the water running over your sand and the sand going under the water. I'm going to get a little bit more here. There we go. And 
Um, that'll do for this tutorial sake. Now we want a dark band. So where was that? That's the top of our water. This here is going to be a wave. So we want to get some dark color. Where is it? Phalo blue. Let's see how we go here. If we can scrumble it in. I'll use my bullshit stick because I want, I'll, I'll, I'll draw it in so you know what I'm doing. I'm getting... bit more and this wave is going to going to be nice and pleasant oh there we go bang just like that okay and bring this across now in that band that's where we want to play with our simple dark so we're going to simply i'll get it all in there i'll stamp it on control where i want to push the head of that paint now what i want to do is get this just simply a darker vibe of the blue turquoise whatnot just like so nice and dark now just play with it get it dark nice around here dark i'm stamping it on that way i want it mainly dark here now and i'll pat it away now while we still got this color simply it looks a bit funny at the moment but we'll get there simply get <clears throat> some of this vibe scalloped out there just like that it looks a bit weird there i'm going to have a mountain of trees there somewhere so they'll have a bit of a shadow under them i'll put that there now so they don't have to do it later now the rest of this wave, it's going to have some more. That went up, I hope. Yeah, it's got to go up a little bit higher and then come back down. And then it's going to be a little bit lower there, a little bit flat here, and then the rest will have that's white and whatnot's in it. We'll do the whites last or later because they'll get in the way if we do them now. I'm trying to make this all straight. Not straight, but, you know, the curves in the wave. Actually, I need it wet. The bottom of it needs to be light, darker, where it's curling up. Once you know where to put these lights and darks, you'll be making waves till the cows come home and you'll have surfing cattle. How's that? Just that this phalo blue that I've got, it's very syrupy. I'm not that keen on it, but it'll do... There we go. Clean that. I'm going back to the filbert and that stuff. See these other two lines I've got here? They become, you got the flat and then you've got a lot of foam. So this is all in a line pretty much all the way across there as well. In a straight line, everything's got to be straight. So you're pretty much putting the dark values there. So when you put the white froth, it's going to make sense. You'll see. I hope so. I haven't done this painting before. This is the first time I'm painting it, so if I bugger it up, just at least say that oh, he tried. He tried. He gave it a go, like any one of us. So I'm pretty much making the, the dark bit of it. There we go, the dark bit of it. And just back to the flat brush. Just underneath that can probably be a little bit more intense. Once the white's on here, you'll think, oh, I know what he's doing now. Yeah, right. Oh, You know what I mean? Okay, getting there. Brush. Let's grab a fan brush. Let's grab some white. I want to put 
the water going into the water. So I need a little scrumbling brush, the water going into the water. So I need a little scrumbling brush. And let's work out where I want this. I want this from about here. Now I'm only going to do a bit at a time. So there, let me see how much room I've got to play with. I've probably dried it too much. And I scrumble back the top half, scalloping it, boom, 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 way back out there into the water. Now, lo and behold, I could have tainted that white because how's that looking in the camera? That does look a little bit too white. So I'm just going to, oh, not that much, taint it with some of that phalo blue. Okay. So it's not pure white. Uh, so you make sure you do that. Don't do what I did just then. Now I'm going to continue now. This is the water hitting the sand. Just scrumble back the top half. Don't go too far at a time because if it dries on you, it's not going to scrumble properly. I call it scrumble. I don't know if it's scrumble, scumble, rub, blend, whatever. But, yeah. So I'm just getting at least, see how much I'm doing. And we'll bring it right up to here. Keep it in cahoots with the horizon line like that. And scumble it, scrumble it back, leaving the bottom half tight. Then you can simply add some other sections within here, like a nice hard bit there. Scrumbling it back. Just so long as it's looking like, how's that looking? That's all right. I need a little bit, I think, just coming here. Go there a bit. Analyze. You always stop and analyze what you're doing. Now we grab this brush and now see our wave. We're simply going to come along here, come along the top like so. A little bit higher than there. There we go. There we go. Now it's coming. Where are we? I want to get. There we go. Now the wave's coming right across here on a nice gentle arc. Getting some more white. This white's just all. Well, before I do, I do need to put where this is going to thump and smash. I need a bit of dark there for that to happen. That's all the, the smashing bit of the wave. You'll see why that works. And, then, and this is coming all the way along. Leaving the If we move all the dark at the bottom, we'll have to put it back. But this now is going to be all the thumping bit of the wave. I'm just using the corner of the brush just to get it going. And that dark blue that I put there, is giving it depth. I'll grab this scrumbling brush just to help me make that, and I've got to slowly build it in front of that corner of the wave there. And if you don't have them darks there, it's just not going to look the part. Get rid of those little forks there. And you just keep adding the white as we go. Is that kind of work? It's slowly getting there. And then we'll slowly be making this more white as we go in front of there, boom, 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 leaving some blues in the middle. And these blues, don't get rid of them all because you watch that big blob of white can fade into that blue, but it's creating the depth still. And then you really grab a detail brush if you want. You can put droplets sort of spraying up from the top of the wave. Now I want to come along here up there a little bit and it's just playing with it backwards and forwards now see the bottom of the wave we want to get some white very gingerly coming along here because there is foam from all this 
coming out to the next section of the wave. Big delay on my camera. Just like that. Now see this other bit we've done here? This needs all the agitation, leaving that dark bit underneath and billowing up because this is just the rumbling smaller wave just rumbling onto the shallow area of the sand. Now I know in my head how I want it to look but whether I can make it look like that I'm going to give it my best shot. Just like that. Sweating here, getting hot and humid. Now we're going to get some more dark bits just scattered in there just to analyse it and fine tune it. Get those dark bits back out there. Now when I dried it, I, I let's say I probably might have dried it a little bit too much and if you do a bit at a time, you can realise, well, I don't need to dry it as much as him. I've got a stiff round somewhere. Where is it? Where are you? I've gone and moved. Here we go. I've gone and moved brushes. There we go. Something like this. That's good for picking up the pure white. And I'll show you. You can tessellate with it. Watch. Uh, let's go here. I want to get this all billowy and brighter. Now, I can dry it. I'm not going to because I'm filming, but yours can be dried if you feel it's too clangy and rubbery. And this is just simply the, the brilliant part of the white. I'll have a look in there, just make sure it's... There we go. Get some... Droplets really spraying up in the sky there. Leave some good dark pockets there. But don't have a pattern of all things like that in it. Put some enthusiasm and pride in your work. Sometimes we can just get so lazy and just want to get it done. I need my toothbrush again. I'm just washing my toothbrush, so bear with me a moment. Grabbing some water. Now see the moon. We want some of that in the water. So I'm just going to cover up the sky so I don't stuff it. So I just tap it down there on the edges, uh, toothbrush, I've got the water there again, I want to grab this and we're going to put the shimmer in the right spot, hopefully, oh, I don't feel I've got enough in the brush there, okay, now I want to, let's, okay, there's my moon. Oh, I've got some in the sky. I'll have to go back to the sky and fix them up. Now, with the moon high in the sky, your stuff like this is very shimmery like I'm doing now. Okay? When it's closer to the horizon, it's more of a sharp. Is that straight? Yeah, we've got something going there. And like I said, you'll have to come back and fix up in the guts of it. Now, what we do with the sand bit, I feel, grab a flat. There's a flat. Here we go. I'll just pull that like that. Just in the sand bit, okay? Just like that. Grab whatever colours. 
sink them back again. Just so as they're not looking wrong. Where'd my little scrumble and brush go? Get a bit of dark there. Now I'll use that white brush again just to put these back where I feel I might need them. Now I'm just going to grab, where's a, I need another flat brush. Try this one. I'm just grabbing some pure white on a flat brush. Uh, it's got a little bit of blue tainted with it. Because see, the, I forgot that I knew something was missing. The top of this is just, oh, I don't like that. Gingerly got some water. There we go. That's better. I just need to have a look there. We're getting there. Oh, I better take that tape off so as we can see the vibe of all that eh? hopefully it didn't peel my there we go now i can also see let's grab just a totally different brush uh, a bit of that color there i don't know maybe that's too dark let's see if we can wash that away i could probably just make some kind of little cloud there there we go just to hide those bits and bobs there I should have mastered up properly, but as you can tell, I'm always hurrying. There we go. Well, that's got of like the the moon on it anyway. I want the dioxine purple. So I'm just going to use the dioxine purple. Get it a bit wet. And it's just simply going to be dioxine purple and white. Beautiful. And over here where I put that dark shadow, I want something, just something over here to break the painting up, a bit of land or something. And then I'll get this start getting it more solid to the edge of that so we don't have a big solid blob there and then we can start blocking that in like crazy i'm going to grab the phthalo blue that was on the brush that flat brush just to get some of this dark shadow in the water there now that paint the dioxine purple, simply grab some titanium white just like that. That'll do. Now bring it to the edge of your dark matter. Don't have the dark matter on the edge. Always cover it up. And then you can leave dark bits inside it all just like so. And leave the horizon base area reasonably dark as well, just so it creates that bit of, oh, goodness me, just so it creates that bit of depth within the painting. Uh, where are we? I just got to fix that business up there. Okay, back to the painting. I'm just simply bowing it into the middle, keeping the bottom dark. It's just simple but effective for you beginners. And you can transform and evolve from these lessons that I teach you into your own art. Okay, it does look a bit dull, so I'm grabbing a, a lot more white now into that, a lot more white, just so as I can highlight probably 15 to 20% of that area, okay? So let's see how this is going to go. Yeah, that's it. 
all that nice just probably little bits here and there watch what I do band down there it's very wet so I've got to be careful it might mud up on me okay that looks okay I got this one here because what color we got there we'll get a dark get the darkest I'm just getting some dark phalo and dioxine because so I just want to sign it and then we can make a frame on it nice tiny neat signature oh another thing that I didn't do which I should do I'll do it after I sign it before I put the frame on it is put the dark value under the water laying on the sand so it doesn't look like it's floating So I'll get that sign there, put Steve's footprint there. And I don't know, is this the right colour? Just the tiniest little line. Just to kind of sit it down. I want to whack a frame on this, see how she looks. There we go. I'll get that up a bit higher. That's not too shabby. We've got some kind of moonlit coastal scene, and it's something you beginners can do. And if you think you can't do it, just practice it, because with all the practice you put behind your work, you can do it. Well, I had a lot of fun doing that. Hope you enjoyed the show. Tell your friends if you like what you saw, but if you don't, you tell everybody. Check out another video of mine. Okay. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.